And this fourth episode of Spoilers and Speculation, I just want to cover some of the things that I would like to see in the next expansion as we start to build up to what hopefully will be the news of it in a couple of months' time. Now, for this one, I'm not going to talk blue sky thinking. I'm not going to talk about features that I would like to see that just aren't in the game at all, like player housing or anything like that. I'm not going to talk about specific class changes that I would like to see either. This is an overall tweaks to current content is how I would put it. And I've picked on five things. There were a few more, but I've picked on five things that I would like to see of current content just tweaked. Not massively redesigned, not adding something that isn't there, not taking anything out even, because there's a few things that we might like to see taken out, but I'm not going to be silly. This is just stuff that might be feasible with my reasoning why. So... In fifth place on this one, I would like to see faster catch-up. Now, what do I mean by that? It means at certain points during an expansion, someone may join the game late. Maybe they used to play a few years ago, want to come back, or maybe they have never played before. Or it might even be just someone wanting to switch to an out. Now, as Legion has gone on, more and more catch-up mechanics have been brought in. And I think they've all been pretty effective and they've always been better than what has gone before it. But what I would like to see is from the start more of an attitude of not putting artificial barriers in the way of either new players or returning players or people who wish to re-roll to a different class. Now, the attitude I would have, my philosophy would be, think about where you want a player to be at a particular point of the expansion. So where would you like them to be? So in Legion, we would have talked about artifact knowledge um artifact level you know in other words artifact points number of legendaries all that sort of thing you know what would you think would be expected at this point then what you should think so now imagine they've just created a new character dinged it 110 or it's a new player or a returning player coming back what are going to be the barriers to them getting up to speed with that and think to yourself so how can we ease that up that's the attitude I would take into this. Because things like the length of time it takes you to gather legendaries, for example, or the length of time it takes to gather artifact power, or even gear, because that's always existed in expansions, that sort of exists to give playability into the game. It's to allow you to feel that you haven't completed the game. There's always more to do, so it stops you thinking that the game is finished in a couple of weeks. But when you think about the player as they should be at this point in time, or at any point in time in an expansion, why are you giving people who've only just come into it all those same things when they're so far behind anyway? Get them right up to speed, and then they can go onto the treadmill along with everyone else. So in fourth place for me, it's adoption of artifact special abilities. Now, I am hoping this should be a given anyway. The reason I think it's important that the... Special abilities we get with our artifacts, not all of them are active abilities, but the vast majority seem to be, is because to not do that would require a significant change in gameplay for each class and spec. And quite frankly, I want the class designers to be focusing on improving the classes rather than wasting a lot of their time on having to redesign. I'm always against redesigns en masse of classes and specs in an expansion. You usually don't get anything major, by the way. Legion was one of, you know, a handful of expansions where they've had a major redesign. But even that, I always think, if you're going to do it for all classes and specs, it's almost like you're not doing it because that class or spec needed it. You could doing it because a command came from on high saying, let's just shake it up for the hell of it, whether it needed it or not. And I think in an expansion, the class designers, as I say, need to be thinking, right, so what do we need to do to improve the flow of this spec or to make it more suitable for this content where it's been left out in the cold a little bit, that's expansion. Focus on those things. Don't think to themselves, oh, we had a working spec here and now actually we've got to work around the removal of this ability what we're going to do so as i say that one i hope is a given but it's nonetheless on my wish list because until it's said it's a given it isn't three i would like <laughs> as i think a lot of people would a change to legendaries now here's the thing i'm not going to argue that they 
fundamentally change this idea of having loads of different legendaries and it taking a certain amount of time to get them all. Even though I don't like that system, I know that that's not going to change. So I'm not going to howl at the moon here. But what I would like to see to smooth out the RNG while still retaining the important features of it taking time to build up your arsenal of legendaries to instead of just have them randomly pop up out of chests or from killing bosses or whatever other content you're doing to actually have proper quest chains where you gather certain materials so maybe from your emissary caches every now and then and the, there can still be an rng element to it you get particular items that are needed on a quest chain that will eventually lead to a legendary with some con measure of control over what that legendary is now to my mind where the legendary system goes wrong especially at the start of an expansion blizzard have already said by the way that the rate of acquisition of legendaries at the start was too stingy uh, and i think that's fairly true I, I understand from their point of view the argument that if you make it too generous then you can't really rein it back or if you make it too stingy you can increase it but it had a tangible effect on people especially doing raiding in terms of what legendaries they were getting. Now, the reason I think there should be some measure of choice, and it's not necessarily a measure of choice, is, right, this is the one I want and that's the one I'm gonna aim for, but maybe within pools, because they're not all equal. It's not just that they haven't all been equal in Legion. Even when Blizzard changed their philosophy slightly in the next expansion, there will be legendaries that are really good and legendaries that are completely useless. And the difference it makes between people getting those, despite what Blizzard say, is, fairly disheartening and if they're going to argue that all of them are useful in different situations there shouldn't really be any argument for why there shouldn't be some control over which ones we go for but introducing a quest line and gathering different materials to my mind would make it last about the same amount of time but you've got that measure of control it's not just down to pure potluck in second place for me is uh, straight straight to number two from a comment that someone put on uh, a video of mine yesterday talking about this is for enchanting and I am an enchanter on my main character and have been uh, in every expansion. We have a bit of a weird situation here and this sort of relates to the, the prevalence of epic gear and a lack of acquiring greens and blue especially gear. But the problem is you sometimes get the odd bit of green gear because you might find the odd green BOE while you're doing quests. But it's never enough. I have a few stacks of the dust in my bank. That's because I bought a load off the auction house recently. Because I was so sick of just never having enough dust when I needed it. And I don't need it very often. In fact, I've used enchants more often for world quests than I have to actually enchant my gear. Or that of my alts. But you never seem to get enough of that. And as for the shards, you certainly don't get any of that. Because where are you going to get that from? You you could get it if you did sort of dungeons after a while. But even that now is, is dropping epic gear. That's all we're getting. So I have a thousand chaos crystals and hardly any dust and shards. And the dust and shards I do have, I've bought from the auction house. Or got from Blood Trader when I couldn't be bothered to do that. So what I would like to see, I don't think there's going to be any change. I mean, some people will obviously say, well, this is where it's gone wrong the pyramid has flipped upside down we've got all this epic gear when actually that should be the rarest gear and we should have much more blue gear than epic gear and much more green gear than that that's not going to change so the simple straightforward thing to do would be to have a breakdown enchant as we've had in the past as technically exists now but unfortunately we don't have a breakdown enchant for the chaos crystals that's what we have a surplus of chaos crystals we should be able to break down chaos crystals into shards we should be able to break down the shards into the dust so in the next expansion that is what i'd be looking for not later on in the expansion either at the start an enchant even if it's not worth any points for leveling it up just to break down your epic crystals into the shards the shards into the dust and that would ease those problems massively and then the final thing for me is a small tweak that would make a big difference if i were to identify what i think as a raider and in a raiding community is the biggest problem with legion and it's not nice to be harsh about it legion is a massive improvement on walls of Draenor. it's a great expansion but if i direct a criticism to it it is 
that it is killing raiders because of the extra content that is that has to be done. Now, there are some raiders who traditionally just want to raid and that's it. They, they log on to raid. They maybe log on a bit outside of those times to gather materials. Of course, they need their consumables. But essentially, they're just logging on to raid and playing something else at other times. Those people have had the rug completely cut out from under their feet. And a great many of those, I think, have left the game. In addition, though, even the ones who sort of play the game as a main feel, and I certainly do, that the impetus to especially farm for artifact power, and at the start of the expansion, it wasn't just about artifact power. It was also trying to get those legendaries as well, doing all that Mythic Plus content especially, because that's the content you can do over and over again. Like raids, okay, you can only do so many raids a week, although as the expansion goes on, you could increase massively the amount of time you can spend in raiding. Your daily dungeon, you're not going to run heroic dungeons all the time, but an MSU cache is like one a day. Save them up for a few days, but it's still an average of one a day. But the Mythic Plus dungeons, you can keep doing those over and over and over and over and over again. And despite artifact knowledge supposedly creating a buffer to prevent, to allow the people who put in lots of time into it to get a bit ahead, but not too far ahead, that hasn't worked out at all. There is a significant gap between the people who put in lots of time to Mythic Plus and those who just do a few a week. So that nece hasn't necessarily worked there. So what I would like to see is that artifact power doesn't actually drop from dungeons or raids at all. Now, hear me out. I'm not suggesting it doesn't award it. I'm just saying it doesn't drop in there. So there's two things about this. First of all, I think Mythic Plus dungeons have a big enough attraction for two things. First of all, people who want to play them competitively for pushing the high keys just for kudos, for getting themselves on the ranking table, stuff like that. But also for the gear, with Titan Forging, and Titan Forging is another, is going to be a slight problem here, but I'm not going to talk about that in this one because I just accept that that's going to be a thing. You can easily, if you put in enough Mythic Plus dungeon time, get yourself some pretty good gear. The best geared people in the world are the ones who do a lot of Mythic Plus dungeons. Even though, you know, you compare someone who just does dungeons with just does raids, the raiders at a certain level will still have overall the best gear, but someone who does both is gonna have the best of all. So what I would suggest is because there's a strong enough attraction to do some Mythic Plus, you don't need people doing 10 a day. So there's the motivation enough to do a bit of Mythic Plus Dungeons for everyone. So why not have a similar system to what Blizzard have already introduced, but have it exclusive? So at the moment, you get artifact power in your weekly cache according to the highest level Mythic Plus Dungeon you did the week before. I am suggesting that that is the only source of artifact power that we get. Now, I know it's not going to be called artifact power in the next expansion because our artifacts are going away, but I'm willing to bet that a similar system will still be there because it does exactly what they want them to do. It's a motivating factor for us to do regular content. So I would suggest that that is the only source. So you don't get artifact power dropping from the chest at the end of a Mythic Plus dungeon. You get artifact power in your weekly cache based on the highest level as we do now. But I'm also suggesting the same thing for raids as well. You get artifact power in your weekly cache for the highest Mythic Plus dungeon you did and the highest raiding you did. So not the most, not quantity, this is quality. So someone, for example, who did, say, Mythic Harjatan would get more than someone who did, say, Mythic Star Orga from the previous tier or something like that, or someone who did Mythic Harjatan more so than someone who did, say, Heroic Avatar. Maybe there's a crossover between, say, Heroic Kill Jaden and the early Mythic bosses before it takes over, but have a difficulty of bosses laid out and the artifact power in your weekly cache based on the most difficult raid content you did the previous week. Encourages people to push higher keys, encourages people to push harder levels of raiding. But also what it does is it doesn't get people to have to repeat content over and over again, several days a week, kill themselves, burn themselves out, just for the sake of getting the artifact power. So anyway, those are my wish lists. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Comments below on other things you'd like to see, or if you think some of the things I'm wishing for would make the game worse, put comments down below, explain that as well. Hope you enjoyed this. If you did, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share for further content. And until next time, I'll see you later.